right, now that everybody's voices are warmed up, let's sing another song. God is good and all is well. Take it away. <laughs> Let's all greet okay, our neighbors. Right now. I need you to say, oh, hello, everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh. job singing this morning. You are to be applauded. So let's uh, welcome Reverend John Considine. Oh, thank you, Michael. Boy, it says now I'm supposed to say a brief prayer. I've been a unity minister for 25 years, Michael. I don't think I know any brief prayers, but we'll give it a shot right now. Divine Father, Mother God, we're so grateful we take a deep breath and experience gratitude for this moment, this day, this hour, this community this of fellow travelers. We give thanks now. We give thanks for the healing of our planet in advance. As our planet is going through the climate change crisis, it is being healed now. We know that. Take that in right now. We hold that and know it and give thanks in advance for the healing of our planet. And we give thanks for the healing of all of our brothers and sisters in Hawaii. We hold them in our hearts in prayer and we bless them with good things happening for them. We give gratitude for all who came before here in unity, going way back to Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, coming down through the present day at this amazing church, this wonderful spiritual community. And for all the opportunities that each of us has today to enjoy life and to do good in the world and this entire week, we give thanks. So be it, and so it is. Amen. All right. So I'm supposed to welcome everybody to the service. Welcome. Great. I'm glad you came here. Um, and, uh, and you folks out in online, I'm not sure. Why, oh, there you are. Okay. 
on Facebook, uh, w whatever. Thanks for being with us. We're so grateful. We want to welcome you to this out of this world, down to earth, spiritual community where we're committed to bringing heaven on earth, right here, right now, in your life, beginning with your life and our life, and then the entire universe of planet. I'm so grateful for that opportunity and for the great uh, tradition we've been given here. And so now we want to recite the statement of faith, which, aha, look at that. There it is. This is so cool here. Together, God is all there is and present everywhere. This is the force of love and wisdom that underlies all of existence. And today's affirmation, I am blessed and grateful. Good things are always happening for me. Very good. Now I want to introduce Susan Toya. Susan, are you going to come and do some wonderful things up here? Come on up. Thank you. Well, let's give Susan a big hand for all that work that she does here at Unity. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. We are so glad you are here with us. And I think for those of you who didn't join us last night for the birthday bash, it's something we need to look into on a recurring basis. If not every month, maybe quarterly. It was wonderful. The energy was so wonderful. And I still feel it this morning. And we thank you for being here, Reverend John. I am Susan Toya. I have been on the board and been a member of this church for many, many years, so I welcome you. Let's start today by affirming our unity of Jupiter core value, love. We are unity. Whoa. Let's do that one more time because I was, I was not on the page. We are unity. unity. All my brothers and sisters and me. Today's daily word is understanding. We affirm with understanding, my spirit is always cool. Will you join me this time? With understanding, my spirit is always cool. One of the best ways to remain calm in any agitating circumstance is to practice understanding. Seeking to understand gives me information and insight and eases my reactivity. It keeps my emotional thermostat dialed down if I'm tempted to lose my cool. Perhaps the poet Rudyard Kipling was referring to understanding in his poem, If, when he wrote of the importance of keeping your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. Properly mastered, my power of understanding gives me strength and presence of mind to be a beacon in times of trouble or crisis. Whatever this day may bring, I will carry the light of understanding with me. I am cool in spirit. I am understanding. Today's daily word is inspired by Proverbs 17, 27. One who is cool in spirit has understanding. And now we have a few announcements. Our first minister candidate, Reverend Victoria Hart, will be speaking at Unity of Jupiter on September the 14th. We hope, or did I say, I'm sorry, I'll keep my cool and say the 24th. Thank you for keeping me cool. <laughs> we hope that as many people as possible will attend and let the board know of your opinion of this potential new minister. 
we are looking for someone to provide housing for Reverend Hart while she's here, probably just for one night. If you're willing to host Reverend Hart, please see Michael Beecher or any of the other board members. The first installment of your Health is Your Wealth lecture series, originally scheduled for August the 24th, has been postponed until October. The first speaker will begin, will be here on September the 21st, and we will provide details on that in the coming weeks. There will be a croning ceremony Friday, September 15th, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. to honor powerful women. This ceremony honors a woman's passage into the third phase of her life, the wise woman. This initiation takes place when a woman turns 50 and ends her childbearing years or feels it is her time to be more in the world. We invite women who are eligible to join us in this powerful ceremony of transformation into the sisterhood of wise woman. Please join Patricia Carroll, Maureen Cullen, Sherry Sova, and Carol Lime for an evening of empowerment and validation of the wise woman that you are. There is a sign-up sheet in the foyer. A love offering is requested. All proceeds will benefit Unity of Jupiter. Heather Holmes has agreed to organize a plant sale this year. It will be held on Saturday, September the 30th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. right here in the sanctuary. Heather headed up a plant sale two years ago and netted a nice profit for the church. Stay tuned for more information. And here's what's happening at Unity of Jupiter. Monday evenings at 7 p.m., there is a Course in Miracles class with Reverend Maureen Cullen. Please take note, though, there were no classes this week and all during the month of August. Classes will resume on September the 11th. Tuesday evenings at 7 p.m. through September 5th, join Leigh Cohen for Mindfulness Coaching. I've heard wonderful things about the first two classes. The first Friday of every month, the Healing Circle with Carolyn Cohen is at 7 p.m. And the next Healing Circle will be September the 1st. Wednesday at noon is our weekly midday prayer group led by Pam Shoston and the prayer chaplains. Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m., the Harmony Exercise Meditation with Reverend John Denny occurs. And our guest speakers for the coming weeks are August the 27th will be Reverend John Denny, September the 3rd, will be Reverends Judith Churchman and Dr. Bob Luckin. September the 10th is Reverend John Denny again. September the 17th is Reverend Diane Robinson, who will be visiting us again. And September the 24th will be Reverend Dr. Victoria Hart, our first ministry candidate. And now to lead us into meditation, let us all join in singing, Surely the Presence. So we don't have Joanne, so we'll have to do this a cappella. A one and a two. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. There's a holy hush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. 
Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Ah, and I invite you to just relax. And you might close your eyes and let's go into meditation. I like to take three or four nice deep breaths to relax myself. Ah. In a mindfulness way, we become mindful of our breathing. We become mindful of all the sensations in the ambient area around us, the chair beneath us that's holding us up. We become aware of any breezes we feel, any sounds we hear. We become mindful of any emotions that we experience, any thoughts we have. We need do nothing with these things except just pay attention to them, be mindful of them, and focus upon the breathing. And you might allow my voice to be a voice for prayer within your consciousness. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this moment. Ah, I'm so grateful for this life. Let me relax even more so now. You might check through your body and see if you have any places that you're holding tightness in. I just noticed my feet are all balled up. My neck is. You might look through your body and take a deep breath into any area of your body that might like to relax. As you relax and just breathe. Just relax and breathe. I know that good things are happening in my life. <clears throat> I'm so grateful. I celebrate with gratitude the good things that are afoot in the universe for me. I know that our divine friend, the, the powers that be and the universe know all that I need, want, and desire long before I do. Thank you, God, for that. And so I open and just experience gratitude, knowing that gratitude and love is the way. The ancient psalmist said, understanding the law of attraction as they did, they said, in all things, give thanks and praise. In all things, give thanks and praise. And so we take a moment now, and within the stillness of your own consciousness, think of the things that you have to be grateful for and give thanks. Thank you, God. Thank you so much for all the good things that I'm experiencing in my life, all the good things that are coming my way into my families as well. We take a moment and say a little prayer for Joanne. Make sure she's okay today. We love and bless her, our wonderful pianist. We hold her in our hearts in love. May she be just wonderful, and just merely detained. <clears throat> mm. Yes. And now in mindfulness, we can continue to meditate all day long with our eyes open, feeling and sensing paying attention to the air, paying attention to what friends are saying rather than trying to think of what we should be saying. We focus upon 
the externals and the sensations in our bodies and in our worlds as we continue to be mindful all day long as we prepare to sing the Lord's Prayer together. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from error for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever Amen. And we know that this is a big week for many of us as our children and grandchildren go back to school. We wish them well. We, we pray for them. In fact, our singer today, Mr. Pat McGee, has a daughter, Emily, going off to the University of Florida for her first time. And he's... My daughter Tamsin up in Detroit is 16, and she's going back to school for her senior year. And I bet there's a whole bunch of people here with grandchildren as well. So this song is being offered for all of them. Pat McGee. You would not have fallen. And I would not have found you. Angel flying too close to the ground. And I passed up your broken wing. Hung around a while. Trying to keep your spirits up. Angel 
with Pat that he couldn't make it through that song for his daughter without having a little tear or two, and I'm the one that couldn't make it through. Pat did, you did great, and I saw a few other people wiping their eyes too. Beautiful, man. So thank you so much. How beautiful. Oh, our children. Don't get me started. <laughs> my, my children. We're so blessed to have them. Well, you know, as we get older, it seems, doesn't it, maybe you find that as we get older, people, you know, we start to talk more about aches and pains and the doctors we see. We sit, tend to go doctors and hospitals. And, oh, my God. I've got a whole staff of, of neurosurgeons and uh, otolaryngologists out at the University of Miami trying to figure out what's wrong with me. I got a, a thing where you, when, you, when I walk, sometimes it feels like I'm on the deck of a ship at sea, and sometimes it's like this, and they don't know what it is. I don't know. This morning, usually I'm pretty good. This morning, Michael, I got up uh, and made my breakfast, had a cu cup of coffee, and got so nauseous, I could barely stand, I could barely walk. I said, no. I said, I better call Michael Beecher. Well, one never does that. When you're going to speak on a Sunday, you don't call in sick. It just doesn't. It's never happened in 25 years. But this morning, I was like, what am I going to do? You know what I did? I called Silent Unity Prayer Room. The si have you all heard of the Silent Unity Prayer Room? How many have called Silent Unity Prayer Room ever? I used to work there. You might have gotten me. Yeah. But there's wonderful people. So, 1-800-NOW-PRAY. N-O-W-P-R-A-Y. Please. It's, it's the best. It's the very best that unity has to offer. When, if, you, if you're into law of attraction, I caught on this recently. If you're into law of attraction, you know that you don't want to spend 17 seconds in negativity or grief or, or all the way up to, if you want to get to 68 seconds, as Abraham Hicks says, then you're skirting with just going to a, into a free fall down into negativity. You don't want to do that. And what I found out was that those calls to silent unity are about three minutes long and gets, you, gets me right out of that. I recommend it to you highly. Would you try it this week if you've never called? If something comes up, a little challenge or something, what will I do to, to make my quota at work or whatever? Call Silent Unity. I'm not feeling so good today. What am I going to do? I'll call Silent Unity. 1-800-NOW-PRAY. A whole bunch of us all over the country, Unity ministers, are talking about Silent Unity. Most of us work that one time or another. I was so blessed to have been there. I recommend it to you highly. Totally best thing. And so now I want to tell you about this cute story I heard about these a carload of nuns, Catholic nuns, uh, who were traveling um, on I-10 in northern Florida, and <clears throat> they were pulled over by a state trooper. And the state trooper recognized the Mother Superior driving and said, Mother Superior, why are you going so slow? You're going, I said, no, son, I always go exactly the speed limit. No more, no less, exactly the speed limit. Well, sister, this is I-10, and you are doing 10 miles an hour. What? <laughs> Why? It's a 70 mile an hour speed zone. I always go, if the sign said 10, I do 10. No, sister, that's the highway designator. That's, the, that's not the speed limit. The speed limit is 70. Oh, I'm so sorry, she said. Sometimes I get those confused. The highway designator confused with the speed. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll work on it. I'll try harder. And the straight trooper said, well, very good, Mother Superior. And he looked around and saw all the other nuns. And they were sweating. They were saying their rosary beads. They were stressed out. He said, Mother Superior, what's wrong with the other nuns? And she said, oh, dug it over it. We just got off of I-95. <laughs> you see, they were in I-10. Okay. <laughs> then, okay. So, I love to listen to NPR at my church in San Jose in the south. Uh, of San Francisco Bay, we adverti advertised on NPR. One day I was driving in the Bay Area and heard psychologist Dr. Richard Wiseman from the United Kingdom discussing studies that they were doing over there on 
at the University of Herefordshire, where he was the head of the psychology department. And he wanted to find out what makes some people lucky and other people not so lucky. And over 10 years, he brought in some 400 people as test subjects. He said, what we think of as luck has been governed by rituals and superstition. You know, carrying a rabbit's foot supposedly brings good luck. Try that. It's an old pagan ritual. Having a lucky penny, carrying all sorts of talismans and amulets, it's all superstition. Ever knock on wood? You know what that does? You're calling out the pagan tree gods. You're not calling the tree gods to come out and help. Wouldn't it be great if that were, you could do that for climate change? Hey, fix the climate. Unfortunately, that doesn't work, but it's all superstition. So, so Wiseman and his group over 10 years um, did certain studies, and they found out that uh, luck and Fortune and opportunity is, is, comes down to four characteristics that people who are lucky seem to have. You might recognize some of these. They had brought in the 400 and they had people self qualify. They gave them psychological tests, and then they had them qualify. Are you lucky? Yes, I'm lucky. Or, no, I'm not, so, I'm not so much lucky. And one testing day, Wiseman had the, in the group, had, had the group. Um, it takes do psychological testing in the morning, and then that afternoon they had a nice cocktail party with lots of great food and treats. And the test subjects were invited then to go down to the cocktail party as a way of saying thank you for taking the test that morning. What they didn't realize was that Wiseman had set the room up in such a way that they had actors, trained actors, and they're playing certain parts. Like one was a CEO played the part of a CEO of a major corporation who wanted to hire people to work for him at, at, at huge, huge incomes. They also planted 10 pound notes and 20 pound notes around the room in various places. At the end of the party, he had, uh, they came back and they at Wiseman and his staff asked, so how was the party? The unlucky people said things like, oh, it was fun. Food was good. Thanks very much. It was nice. Had a good time. Thanks. The lucky people said, wow, I found a 10 pound note. I found a 20 pound note. I, another one said, I was talking to a guy who's CEO of a business and he's gonna uh, interview me to take over a certain, uh, the marketing area of his corporation. Those were the lucky people. And why was that? Why did they find the good stuff and the unlucky people didn't? Well, one thing was they connected. They connect, they reach out and they network. The only person that spoke to, or the only people who spoke to the, C, the, the CEO was the people who went over and, and introduced themselves. The unlucky people, they just kind of hung among themselves and like wallflowers and they ate their food and chatted without risking. They didn't risk to go out and shake hands and meet somebody new. It's important, I think, even for a spiritual community like our own to, to afterwards to get to know each other go to lunch with somebody, have coffee or whatever, get to know each other, meet somebody that you've never met before. That's huge for a community, for a community. Another, so networking is huge. You want to be in the community. Lucky principle number two that they found, lucky people tend to be chilled out and relaxed people. I've talked about this in the past here, didn't get to this part. They tend to be relaxed people. These are typically people who, believe it or not, meditate. Wiseman, uh, this was not a religious, University of Herefordshire is not religious, but they teach mindfulness meditation, like this will be offered here, I take it as well. So people who meditate tend to become more intuitive, more in touch with their meditation. And then, very importantly, they do it. When they get an intuition, like a great idea, they get to work on it. They begin it. You know, if, if, they, if you've got an idea, a wonderful idea, get to it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it, the, uh, the ancients say. In the Scottish Himalayan expedition, whatever you can do or dream, you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. So you get a good idea, don't analyze it forever. Oh, you might 
run it by, a, you know, a, somebody like a consultant in your field or whatever. But get, get to it. Give it, a, give it a shot. Give it an, I, I can't tell you how many times, well, maybe twice, where I had a great idea for an invention. And I said, eh, I'm not the type of person that can do that. You know, like a, a year later, I see it on Ronco. <laughs> Some guy named Ron Ronco is selling it for, you know, He's making a lot of money on my idea. Well, those ideas float around among the human consciousness. Spiritual teachers have been teaching this idea of following our intuition for thousands of years. You'll recall the prophet Elijah said, Scripture says, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by with a really good idea for you. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a still, small voice. That's a still, small voice within us whispering to you, do that, try that, meet him, call them. That's the presence in 1 Kings 19. It says, pay no attention to the earthquakes of life. Pay no attention to the, the fires and the storms and the, the brouhaha's at your office and all the problems you got. Go within and ask, what's mine to do here? Give me a good idea, dear God. That's what I did this morning. I went in. I said, okay, dear God, I feel nauseous. This is not a good thing. I can't, you know, I, I, I have to be there. So I called silent unity. I, oh, okay. What a great idea. And if I, if that, I, well, whatever, we'll leave, leave it. That's a great idea. You'll find, if you watch great poker players, if you watch the world poker tour like I, like I do some, I had a friend who used to play um, the celebrity world poker tour, and he, and he told me about that sometimes poker players would just sit there. They'll sit there and look. They will go into like a meditative state where they're just looking and they're open to tells, T-E-L-L-S. Looking, they're open to seeing something that their unconscious mind will let them know what people might be thinking or doing. Or they'll see something the way that they're operating, they're, they're, they, they're, they're, they cough or they, they scratch their head or something when they have a great hand. And they see it and they feel it. And it's from intuition. It's from being open. Number three, lucky people have positive expectations. They believe they're lucky, for one thing. They visualize great things happening for them. Imagine yourself taking that trip. Imagine yourself doing that athletic thing you want to do. Imagine yourself healthier. Um, Abraham Hicks, who knows what I'm talking about? Abraham Hicks, Esther, Esther Abraham they said, you want to lose weight? The best things you can do, don't count calories and all that stuff. Before you eat, imagine yourself, how you want to be, how you, how you want your body to be. Imagine, so, so a constructive, powerful visualization. Visualize the good things. That, see, I'm not the kind of person I want to go to, I don't usually divulge my goals, but I want to go to Singapore in Southeast Asia with my son and his family someday, and, and I'm, but I'm not the kind of person to do that. I don't take long trips like that. I just never have. You know, my idea of a long trip is go to North Carolina and go down, rafting down the rivers. That's my idea of a vacation, but I got this idea now. Okay, but I'm not the kind of person that does that. I don't like long airplane fl flights. I don't have the kind of money to do that. It's not my job. It's not your job to figure out how. It's your job to say, God, here's what I want to do with my life. And then to visualize yourself doing it and give thanks. And I like this part. Give thanks in advance that it's about to happen for you. And that's your job is to know what you want and then to visualize it and to affirm that this is, in fact, happening. The, the power of deliberate, the, what, what Abraham Hicks calls the law of deliberate creation will work for you. The power of deliberate creation, what you want to have happening. Dr. Wayne Dyer's manifestation meditation, I'm on his audio tape because I 
told Wayne how much my then professional practice increased in clientele and staff and money because I was doing creative visualization that he had taught me that we're talking to about Michael about doing here, offering here at some point. Very powerful stuff. Number four, so important, lucky people are what? They're resilient. They know that bad things are going to happen, but they don't last. Bad things do not last, do they? They always go away. You know, one, I remember back in the economic crisis of 2008, when I had a church at Unity of Silicon Valley, right near Palo Alto, I met a very successful man who told me, is this working, Larry, could you? Is, okay, all right, good. Uh, that he was an en a software engineer, and he and about 800,000 other software engineers got laid off. And they had bought all these expensive homes and now they had to fly back to India or Cleveland or wherever they came from and live with their parents in the basement or whatever. It was a mess. It was a horrible mess. This guy said, there's an opportunity for here for me. I wonder what it might be. He checked out his intuition. He got a great idea. These companies are still going to need software engineers, and these software engineers are still going to need some work, so I will start a personnel agency. This, this super bright open and resilient guy who just knows that bad times don't, don't always, uh, don't last forever. He, he started a personnel agency. He hired hundreds and hundreds of these software engineers and put them to work. It's like Kelly Girls or whatever they used to call that company, Kelly Personnel. And he did very, became a millionaire, made a lot more money than when he was um, doing uh, software uh, engineering. He knows <clears throat> there's another great, uh, story at which I love that, that, uh, that, uh, what's it, what Wiseman told, he said, <clears throat> um, he had this one fella who said how lucky he was, very lucky guy, so many good th things always happened for him, and then he went home for the week and came back on Monday for more testing, came back hobbling with a broken leg, he had fallen and broken his leg. And Wiseman said, you're not so lucky now, are you? He said, oh, it's a little too early to tell. He said, the last time, hear this, the last time I was in hospital, the guy said, was 25 years ago, and I met a great nurse, and we got married. So it's a little too early to say how well this break, broken leg's going to go. Something good just might come out of it, and I'm because I'm still a lucky guy. And so no. You might look at yourself in the mirror. What actually what he says to do. You know, we teach in unity prosperity courses and all look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, you're a lucky guy. I'm a lucky, I'm a lucky woman. I'm a lucky gal. But it's but Wiseman also says something that I've been doing ever since I heard him talking about this. I think I heard this on one of the YouTube videos that he does. <clears throat> he does a luck journal every day. He looks back every morning. He looks back at the previous day, previous 24 hours. Okay, what happened that was lucky? And then he, he thinks, and then he writes it. He says, that's important. Write it down. Write it down. What, what was lucky about yesterday? Well, my grandson called me. True story. How wonderful that was. I was a, I'm a lucky guy. I have a grandson who loves me enough to call me. Well, think for yourself right now. Hmm. What, what happened yes, in the last 24 hours that was an example of how lucky you are, of something good that happened? Think, think about that. When you get home today, do a luck journal. Begin your luck journal. It will cement in the truth about yourself, that you want it to be the truth, that you want to experience in life, not what your parents told you or your teachers told you or what, what your employer told you, but no, I am a lucky person. Start there and then, and then get out and network, meet people, uh, oh, meditate, trust your intuition, take advantage of the ideas you get. Have positive three, have positive expectation, visualize, Good things happening in the future. And be resilient. Remember that guy with the broken leg.
Too early to tell whether it was good luck, bad luck or not. Yeah, so, and keep a good luck journal. And in this week, but you give it a try. Call 1-800-NOW-PRAY. 1-800-NOT-PRAY-NOW. That's, that will get you, that's another eight, kind of 800 number. <laughs> I tried that one time, no. 1-800-NOW. How many will call Silent you this week? Just for fun. Okay. Thanks so much. I, as a former, as I totally support Silent Unity, I totally support you. I call them three, four times a week. Great stuff. All right. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful to, to, to have been with you today. Thank you. Now we move into our celebration of abundance, our opportunity to give back from our financial abundance. Let's begin by reading the Unity of Jupiter Prosperity Blessing together. It's on the screen. In a universe overflowing with the abundance of good, we acknowledge God as the source of all our blessings. We affirm that our receptivity and acceptance of this good from every direction, known and unknown, expected and unexpected, our abundant good comes to us now. Thank you, God, and so it is. There are many ways to give. You can drop your gift in the baskets that will be going around. You can also text your donation Two five six one five eight one 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 nine, or give by debit or credit card after today's service in our office located off the sanctuary. Most of these options can be set up for automatic recurring giving. And to keep our time of giving sacred, I would like you to ta now take your gift in your hands and bless it. You are planting the seeds to your own prosperity and giving back to God from the abundance that has already been provided for you. Breathe life into your gift and thank God that you have this gift to give. Now affirm with me the offertory blessing, divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Matt McGee, play for us. Let it be, let it be, let it be, 
there will be an answer let it be 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 whisper words of wisdom let it be Yeah, a whole bunch of them are smiling on us now. And so I invite the ushers to come forward with our gifts and prayer requests. Ah, yeah, so hold this for yourself. I am a prosperous person. I am a prosperous person. I give mightily and I receive mightily. I'm so grateful for all the good things in my life. We're so grateful for all the gifts that are given to the spiritual community that we may carry on the tradition of unity down through the decades, down way beyond our own time and to the, our children and their grandchildren because we gave, we were here, we volunteered, we made this happen here. We're so grateful. Thank you, God, for blessing us. And we're open to receive our good now. Every one of us is now open. Deep breath, I'm open to receiving my good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now... This, these are prayer requests. We hold in our hearts the intentions of these people for healing, for, for wealth, for welfare, for good times, for, for whatever is needed. We hold in our hearts these intentions and know that good things are coming for everyone who has requested them and is open to them. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. So be it and so it is. Amen. Oh. Okay, so we're going to pray for unity of Jupiter. I'm going to invite you to pray with me the prayer for unity of Jupiter. Together, the perfect home and the perfect minister for unity of Jupiter have already been chosen by God. We affirm that both will be revealed to us in God's time and we keep our hearts and minds open to the beautiful future that is in store for our spiritual community. I invite you now to stand up with us and we'll sing the peace song followed by the prayer for protection. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God as creator. Family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let 
with me Let this way come along and down With every step I take Let this be my joyous vow To take each moment and live each moment In peace eternally Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And our prayer of protection together. Life of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And we say, yay, God. I love it. I love it. I love it. Larry, great job, man. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> hey, love you, man. Yeah. yeah, hope I see you again. All right, I hope yeah. so, too. You play anywhere regularly? I've got a little band. We're just starting to play around town. Uh, you, do you live up this way? I live, well, I live in Century Village, which is as close. Oh, yeah. Great job.